So what is the best age to take Social Security? And that's a great question. And the answer a lot of people will give as soon as possible. You want to grab it as soon as you can. You've been working your entire life. You're entitled to your Social Security payment. But there are some different factors that play in as to when it would be the best time to actually start taking your Social Security. I'm going to go through that right now. I'm going to go through the factors that make a difference when you start drawing. I'm going to show you some real life examples. And I'll also show you the percentage of people that take it early, the people that take it in the middle, and then the people that take it late. And we'll kind of try and understand what makes sense for us to figure out the best time to take our Social Security. And I'm Keith Armbrecht. I'm founder of Medicare on Video. I help people across the country make the right Medicare choices. Obviously, Social Security comes along right about the same time. So we want to understand that if you're about to start Medicare, or even if you're in your late 50s or early 60s, where Medicare is going to be on your horizon, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be explaining everything you need to know about Medicare as well. I just wanted to jump in for a quick second and invite you to join my private Facebook group, Talking Medicare, where you can get answers to just about any questions on Medicare and interactions with others that are also in Medicare. There are no agents, no sales whatsoever. It's absolutely free. Just visit TalkingMedicareGroup.com. It'll take you right there. You can sign up for free. Easy to do. Enjoy the video. Well, right now we're going to talk about Social Security and what is the right age to take it and it's a little complicated. We don't want to mess it up because we could absolutely leave money on the table or we could get what is typically a penalty for taking it too early if we're not careful about exactly the way we set it up. So let's first back up and understand some of the things that go into Social Security. You can log into your My Social Security account and it'll give you a personalized overview of your window and things that you will be able to manipulate to understand if you take it early or if you wait or if you take it late. It, it, it'll show you everything that you need to know. So make sure you set up your My Social Security account. You can just Google My Social Security and it'll take you right there. You got to log in. There's some authentication factors that you need to work through. But once you get it, you'll have it and, it'll, and you need to check information in there as well. Your earnings history, you want to make sure is correct because it's all going to depend on your earnings history. So what you'll find when you go through is first off eligibility. And a lot of the stuff that I'll show you today comes from Fidelity Investments. They have a pretty decent presentation on, on Social Security payments. So we're going to go through that and understand exactly. And then like I said, I'll show you actual real life as well. But eligibility, to be eligible, you need to have worked 40 quarters, so 10 years where you're paying into Social Security and the benefits are calculated on the average of your 35 highest years. So that's your lifetime. So what you've averaged over a 35 period window, and it's going to be the 35 highest average earnings. So if you had a year or two in the middle that are significantly lower, it's not going to calculate into your Social Security payment. So that's certainly the first thing to understand is how it's calculated to begin with. And then the biggest factor that we need to understand is what is called full retirement age. And this used to be easy because full retirement age was 65. Made it pretty easy to understand at age 65, we're probably coming into Medicare, we're probably taking our Social Security, but it has changed where now they have raised the full retirement age. We're obviously living longer and they were able to pass a bill some years ago where it raised the full retirement age from age 65 to age 67. Now, when they did that, they didn't want to just do it right off the bat where everybody went to age 67 because if you were 64 at the time, it would certainly adversely affect you. So it has incrementally increased over the years. You can see right here, depending upon the year that you were born. So if you were born in 1955, your full retirement age will be 66 and two months. If you're born in 56, same 66 and two months. 57 goes up to 66 and six months. 58, 66 and eight months. 59, 66 and 10 months. 
So you got to figure out if you're born in those years exactly when you will have your full retirement age. That's when you get your 100% of Social Security payment. 1960 or later, it now goes to age 67. So keeps it a little cleaner, a little easier. We know at age 67 is our full retirement age. So what exactly does that mean? It means that if you take it earlier than that, you can still take it at age 62, you're gonna get less of a payment. So from 62 to 67, that payment's gonna go up 8% per year. So it's a pretty big gap in time, also a pretty big gap in money. It's important to understand exactly what that is because to take it at 62 might be the right choice, but we need to understand what we're going to be working with if we wait until age 67. So the amount you're going to get is called your primary insurance amount. And it's pretty simple. It's your earnings plus the years you've worked plus your age equals that payment amount, whatever monthly benefit you're going to get from Social Security. And again, you need to check on the My Social Security site. They will show your earnings pretty much for your entire lifetime. And you need to check to make sure that that is correct. Because if it is not correct, then your payment will be off usually in a lower fashion. So you wanna make sure we get everything that we're entitled to from Social Security. So let's look at an example of how it works. And this is a projected example, kind of a median type numbers on income and Social Security payments. So when we understand this, it's just to show us really the difference between taking it early or taking it full retirement age. In this example, we're looking at a full retirement age of age 67. So if you're born in 1960 or later, this is the type of payout that would be considered kind of a median. I'll show you a real life example with a higher net earning and a net payout also at the end, but just hang in here and we'll show you the difference between the payouts. And that's kind of what's important. So you can see here, if you took it at age 62, and again, it's not necessarily the wrong answer to take it at 62. A lot of people say grab it when you can. There are other factors that would make it less attractive to take it at 62. I'm gonna go through those in just a minute. But here, if we did take it at 62, the payout would be $1,400 a month. If we waited until age 67, it's $2,000 a month. Now, that's a big period of time. It's a five year window in between the two. Is it worth waiting five years for your payment to go up $600 a month? So let's assume you could take it at age 62, but you didn't need it. So if you took it and then just invested it, put it right into a mutual fund every month for five years, you'd have a significant amount of money and it would grow as well. So this payment is going up 8% a year. If you make 8% or more, then you're doing just fine by taking it early. However, obviously if you needed the money and you weren't using it for investment, it's a tough call. And again, that's where it's gonna come in, how much you may need the money at age 62. And I'm gonna show you in a minute, again, other reasons why you may not wanna take it at age 62. But let's assume we waited until age 70. So that payment would then go up to 2480. So the difference here is maybe do we take it at full retirement age, age 67, or do we wait three more years and get another almost $500 a month? And again, that's a tough call. That's a very short window where it's only three years, but if you took that $2,000 a month at age 67 and you invested it, if you didn't need it and you invested it and it grew, you know, it may not make sense to wait until age 70 to take it. So if it's me in this scenario, I'll show you in just a minute again, real life, and I'll tell you exactly what I would do. I'm not gonna base it on this chart, but on the next chart, I'll show you exactly what I would do when I would choose to take my Social Security. We also have to kind of look at average life expectancies now. And we're obviously living much longer than we used to. We were just watching a show last night where it was based in the 50s and 60s and every single person was smoking a cigarette. And obviously that's the way it used to be in the 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s into the 80s. Everybody smoked cigarettes and that just really crippled life expectancy, which is kind of crazy. But now, we certainly live a much healthier lifestyle and we're living much longer. You can see here from 1960, where males were 66 years old, 
Wow, that's barely into retirement. Females were 73. In 2023, life expectancy for a male is 84, almost 20 years more, females 87. So significant increase in life expectancy. So we want to maximize our income during that period of time. Now, some of us may know if we have chronic family health conditions, our life expectancy may not be that long. Or if we have very healthy parents and grandparents and they've lived a very long time, we may very well live well into our 90s. And I don't know if we'll hit 100, but well into our 90s. My mom is about to turn 90 in, in a couple months and she's doing just great. So we have to plan. Last thing we want to do is get to 88, 90 and we run out of money. We don't want that to happen. So we got to make sure that we maximize whatever income we're going to be working with. So when do most people take their Social Security? When do they take their benefit? And this is pretty interesting to know and kind of see exactly where it's not a one answer fits all. But 36% of men, 38% of women take it between age 62 and 64. So they're taking it early. They're, they're taking it off the table. They're eligible. It's their money. They want it. They're going to take it early. And whether, again, they need it, a lot of times that's the case. You need it to be able to pay rent, to be able to buy groceries, whatever it may be. Or if they don't need it and they figure they can do better by investing it themselves, uh, it's just certainly a decision to be made. 55% of men, 52% of women, so the majority of men, majority of women, take it between age 65 and 69. Now, that I, I would assume that that would even go much stronger right on full retirement age. So when they reach full retirement age, they're taking their Social Security because there's no penalties, there's no decrease. That's 100% of what your, your Social Security payment should be. 9% of men, 10% of women, very low, wait until age 70 plus. So there's really no reason to wait past age 70 because it's not going to grow anymore. So you want to, at the very least, take it at age 70. But a very small amount, leave it in there. So there's a couple reasons of thought for this. So number one, let's say you didn't take your Social Security early and you're waiting till full retirement age at 67 and you die at 66 and eight months. You've got no Social Security payment. So there's nothing there. If you had taken it early, you would have it in an account. Again, if you didn't use it, but if you did use it, that's okay too. But if you took it early, it's your money. You take it off the table, you take it from the government, goes into your control, and you can use it how you see fit. If you don't, then it's still in the government control. And whenever you die, that's the end of it. So coming in at full retirement age, 67, again, might make a lot of sense to take it off the table, put it in your control, versus leaving it in the government control. But you can see here where the majority do. The majority do at age 67. And why would that be? And it's really kind of simple to understand. If you take your Social Security before full retirement age and you're still producing income, so you're still working or you still have income, then it will penalize that Social Security payment. So if you are still working and you can see right here on the chart, before full retirement age, if you're making more than $22,000 on an individual basis, then for every $2 of Social Security, they're going to withhold one. So in other words, you're only going to get half of that Social Security payment. So that really wouldn't make much sense at all. If the year that you're turning full retirement age, you started, so let's say you're going to turn full retirement age in October, but you start your Social Security January 1st of that year, they're going to withhold $1 for every $3 that you make over the limit. So you don't want to be in that position. After full retirement age, they don't withhold anything. So you get full benefit at full retirement age. So what that means is if you're age 62, 63, 65, and you still are working, you still have a job, and you're making more than $22,000 a year, it probably isn't going to make a lot of sense to take Social Security because you're going to get penalized and pretty significantly by taking it early. So if you are not working, you know, a lot of people may be on disability, they may, you know, already have retired by that time, then it might make a lot of sense to take Social Security early at 62 or even at 64. 
but just understanding the ramifications if you do still have income and what kind of income are we talking about? We're pretty much talking about wages or self-employment income. What we're not talking about is we're not talking about pension payments, annuity payments, IRA payments. It's pretty much personal income. So if you're still working or if you're self-employed, then that is what will affect that payout. Now, another thing to consider is how your Social Security payment is going to be taxed. And a lot of people are surprised by this, that they did not know that taxes can be applied to your Social Security. You would think that it would come to you pre-tax or after tax. It would come to you without having taxes taken out. But on Social Security, there is part of it that can be taxed. And you can see here, it's based on income. So again, income is going to play a part in your Social Security. So this comes into play even after full retirement age. So if you are still having income, and I'll show you the type of income, it's more than what it is on the penalty phase for pre-full retirement age. But for income, you can see here, for single, $25,000, married, $32,000, there's no tax on your Social Security. So if you're little to no income, then you have no tax on your Social Security. However, if you're making between 25 and 34,000 or 32 and 44,000 joint, they're gonna tax 50% of your Social Security payment. So if you're making $3,000 a month, $1,500 of that 3,000 is gonna face income tax, just like you have regular income tax on your earnings. So it does surprise a lot of people. If you're making above 34,000, not a big number by any means, or above 44 joint, they're gonna tax 85% of that Social Security payment. So that's gonna limit, reduce your Social Security payment pretty significantly because it's gonna to go to tax money, which again, surprises a lot of people. So something we need to understand going into retirement so that we don't have any surprises down the road. And again, the income for this type of scenario, different than the other, this includes number one, 50% of your Social Security payment. So 50% of your Social Security payment is going to count towards that income number, which is kind of crazy. They're going to count it towards that income number and then tax it on top of it. Income from municipal bonds, wages, business income, interest, capital gains, dividends, traditional IRA distributions. So this will surprise people a lot. Once you reach, some people have their IRA money put away and they haven't used it, and then they reach age 70 plus and they have to take required minimum distributions all of a sudden that's going to put you into a position where they're going to start taxing your Social Security benefit as well. So important to understand that. Rental income also plays into it. So just about any income coming in is going to play into that fact on whether they're going to tax your Social Security payment. Income that is not included in the tax part of the Social Security is tax deferred buildup in your IRA, income from Roth IRAs, non-taxable income from life insurance or HSA distributions that are made to pay for medical expenses. So a lot of things that don't qualify into it, and some a lot of people don't understand either. HSA money, that money you've put into an HSA account all your life hopefully and now you have, you can use that HSA money to pay Medicare Part B premiums. So a lot of people that are affected by IRMA where their Part B premium is significantly higher because of their income, they need to understand you can use that HSA money to pay pre-tax for your Medicare Part B. So it works out great in that circumstance to pay your Medicare Part B premium. All right, so let's look at a little bit of real life. If you log into your My Social Security account, this is what you'll see. And you can do a lot within this account. It's certainly something you want to get familiar with. You can see your Social Security statement. That's going to show you pretty much your lifetime income by year. So you want to absolutely take a look at that and make sure that those numbers are accurate. If they're not, you're gonna to have to be able to prove that they're not, but you wanna make sure that they're accurate. You can replace your social security card here. You can get your benefit verification letter here. So if you apply for Medicare, a lot of times it takes a long time to get the card and get your number. You would find that number here much quicker than when you get your actual card from Medicare. It's on your benefit verification letter. So open that up when you're expecting your Medicare number to be issued, and that'll make things a lot easier for you going forward. 
also shows you, number one, if you're eligible, have you worked your 40 quarters, your 10 years of work, you need all green bars there to make sure that you are all set to start your Social Security and your Medicare. Now we'll have a page there also where it kind of breaks everything down for you and makes it a little bit easier to understand, shows you a graph on whether you take it at 62, 64, 68, 70, whatever it may be, shows you the amount that you will receive that is projected at this point. Depends on what age you're looking in here. Uh, but you can, I'll show you on the next slide, you can manipulate and change things if you're expecting to have more income or less income in future years. It'll show you exactly how that'll impact your Social Security payment. It shows you disability benefits. It shows you survivor spousal benefits. We're not going to talk too much about spousal benefits right now. I'll try to do a video on that as well. So make sure you subscribe and that way when the video comes out, you'll know about it. But talking about spousal benefits, if one spouse dies, how does it affect the other spouse? It's a pretty big deal within Social Security. So we need to understand that as well. But this gives you a pretty good overview of kind of your snapshot in Social Security. And then it also has a live chart where you can move things around here to see exactly how it would affect what you're going to do. You can see it shows a place to put expected future earnings. So if you put expected future earnings, if you have an idea, if you're going to make more than you're making now, or your income is going to grow or it's going to get less, you want to put that into there and it will adjust the payments accordingly. And then you can move this little chart to whether you want to go to 64 or 63 or 68, whatever it may be, it'll show you what your monthly benefit will be. And it's pretty accurate. It's pretty easy to use. So I, I think you'll find it very helpful. It's all right in the My Social Security website. So just make sure you log in there and, and get familiar with it because it's going to come around quicker than you think. And then we're back to Medicare. We're pretty close. If we're looking at Social Security, we're also pretty close to looking at Medicare. So that's exactly what we do is we help people walk through and get all the pieces in the right places because you will find Medicare more confusing than you will Social Security. Medicare has got so many different pieces and we want to make sure we get it right. It's actually terrific if we get it right, but you want to get it right from the beginning because it can come back to bite you uh, if we don't put it together correctly in the first place. So feel free to give us a call. Fill out the information on my website, medicareonvideo.com, and we'll send you a quote on the best Medicare supplement plan in your zip code so you can understand right off the bat exactly what your cost is going to be within Medicare. Make sure you look through my channel. I've got all sorts of videos on Medicare, walking you through every piece of it to make sure that we understand it because that's what we want. We want to go into retirement, number one, having enough money, and number two, not thinking about stuff like health insurance. We want to know that when we go to the doctor, God forbid we go to the hospital, that it does what it's supposed to do. And that's exactly the way we set it up to make sure everything gets done the way it's supposed to do. We don't want any surprises. So I hope you found all this helpful. I have a book that you can download for free. I'll show you how to do that right now. Medicare Made Clear. It's a great resource to keep on your computer. Hope you found all this helpful. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you found it very helpful. A couple of other things that you'll also find very helpful. Number one, Download a copy of my free book, Medicare Made Clear. I spent a lot of time and a lot of effort putting this together, and it has everything that you need for Medicare now and in the future down the road. I have videos in the book. I have all the links that you need for things that you'll want to do within Medicare. You can access it right in the book. Very easy to do. Just visit medicareonvideo.com forward slash free book and you can download it for free. You can save it on your computer. You can save it on your iPad. It's a great resource to have, again, for now and in the future. Another thing that you'll find helpful is down the road, when you come into Medicare, sometimes it makes sense to do a price check on your Medicare supplement plan. So I made it very easy to do that as well. Just visit medicarepricecheck.com, put in your basic information, and we'll email you a quote on your same plan that you have right now, a G, or an N or an F, whatever it may be. And likely we'll be able to save 20 to $60 a month in premium because a lot of times plans come out with better rates. So if we can get a better rate for the same plan that we currently have, just makes a lot of sense. And then obviously take advantage of all the information on my website at medicareonvideo.com. I have everything that you need right there for 
understanding IRMA, understanding employer work coverage, everything that you need, especially in the guides and forms section, you'll find right there. So we update everything every year, so everything should be up to date and current with the right deductibles and premiums and things like that. Hope you found all this helpful. Have a fantastic day. Wait, don't go anywhere. There's a couple more videos right here that you'll find very helpful with your Medicare journey. So take just a minute, watch the videos. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking this button, and that way you'll have access to all my videos for everything that you need for Medicare. Hope you find it helpful. Have a fantastic day.